Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to the RV Solar Shop, and we're continuing on part three on the Airstream uh, Class A, doing a big Victron solar system, 10,000 VA of inverting power, a uh, whole bunch of solar. Uh, we're going to be getting to that in probably part four. Uh, in this part, we are finishing up the batteries. Uh, we're getting the uh, multipluses programmed and hooking all that stuff up and just doing all the finishing touches, pretty much everything we didn't get done in part two minus solar. So uh, if that is of any interest to you or uh, you just like uh, seeing me fumble around in front of a camera because I stumbled into doing YouTube, uh, continue to watch and uh, subscribe or leave a comment down below if you have any questions about anything we're doing. And uh, <laughs> I got this joker helping me out here today too. <laughs> uh, that's my son, by the way. My name's Sean. That's Levi. Uh, Keep the pants. <laughs> what? No. Show the pants. All right, there's, there's the pants. Hello, kitty. Hello. Uh, he had a sweatshirt for a while, a soda solar sweatshirt, but he's... Uh, I'm a thug. He is. All right, we're going to get back to work. All right, so where we're at here is uh, we just got all this stuff hooked up or finished the hookups on that. Uh, we got this programmed. We've got some more programming to do on it. I'm gonna show you that, but I'm not gonna get into the details on programming these two because there's tons of other videos where it shows how to do that. Uh, if anybody's really interested in a specific one from us, I could probably do it, but I feel like I've done it in a lot of different videos and yeah, uh, to me it's not all that interesting. I'm gonna talk about, in my mind, what are the interesting things in this. So uh, again, we got, these uh, two 48 volt 5Ks in here. And uh, we do have the third battery in there. Let's go take a look and see what we did there. All right, here is the magical Bay of Wonder that we've been working on. You can see some things have come together there. Uh, I'm gonna have Levi turn on that battery. He actually put it together and did all the programming on it. We got some documentation here. Um, I did all of them. He did, he did a great job. And uh, one of the things he did was uh, hooked up each of the batteries in parallel and we did, we just did the dip switches here to uh, set, I think that one zero, number one, number two, that's the way binary works. We don't start at one, we start at zero. So they're all um, identified or connected and they're all figuring out what state of charge they want to be. We have not done a full conditioning charge on them yet, so they're kind of wandering all over the place. I think eventually we will hook them them, them up to the servo, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, Levi also went through and did updated the settings on them. These are actually not our settings. This is actually from uh, the off-grid solar garage, uh, the wonderful gentleman from Australia. Uh, we're using some of his settings there. And uh, yeah, here's how this is coming together. And we like it. All right, so back here, we're at the back of the coach. I'm gonna be teaching the boy how we make our connections in the uh, transfer switch here. We've been going over the basics of that. So I thought I'd bring you guys in and uh, show you kind of what we're doing here. We've already started a little bit and uh, I got one more thing to do and then we'll... Well, you got gloves on. I'll get to that. All right, it's a question we get a lot, which is how do you make these connections back here in the transfer switch? So I've labeled some things, so it's a little bit easier. Uh, we got the generator up there. We got the panel there. And we got shore power there. So shore power actually comes in to right there. And the generator comes in right there. And then this transfer switch switches to here. So this is our main output. And then I've got some things labeled here. I got out. And where is it? Oh, in, okay. So in, and this is in multi-plus. So we take the in on the multi-plus and we connect it to the output here of the transfer switch. That's what's open now. I disconnected where the panel used to go. The multi-plus is gonna be in between those. <clears throat> and then the out of the multi-plus is gonna connect in here to go to the panel. And uh, don't worry, we're not gonna leave those there, but do pay attention to, these are basically the same things that are used here. But what we do is we'll be able to use that same box and uh, you put this heat shrink tube over top of this once you make your connection, and then we'll just tuck it into the box. I haven't had a problem with that 
yet, and uh, this works pretty good for us, and that way if you ever need to get to it, you can, and you don't need to try and cram another box in here. That's what I've been doing. Italy. Yep, and uh, this young man is gonna participate in this today. I'll think about it. <laughs> so I'm joking, I'm half joking. All right, we've got some work done here, as you can tell, and I uh, figured I'd show. Uh, I ended up wrapping it up, but Levi definitely learned some, so hopefully you can too if you're watching this, or you just enjoy the sound of my voice. Comment down below what you like. Uh, so we've got our uh, panel, right? It comes in here and these are those wires. And we made that connection there. And then the, uh, and that goes into the AC out of the MultiPlus. So it comes out of the MultiPlus into the panel. And then this is the output of the transfer switch and it goes into the MultiPlus. And then we have our AC2 out running here to this little fancy pants 50 amp breaker, or 50 amp uh, box receptacle thing. I think that's what it's called. Uh, look it up. Uh, so that's about done. Um, it's a little tricky getting all this in there, but I should be able to get the cover on there and I think that looks good. And now that we got that going, let's take a look over here. Yes, sir. We've got our batteries charging, and uh, when you're charging pretty much any battery, regardless of what state of charge it says it is, you got to charge it up fully. And uh, one thing I want to draw your attention to here is the amps that are flowing through each of these batteries. We've got uh, 23, 23, sorry about the glare, and 21 to 23 over there too. That's real good, nice and balanced. That means uh, a couple of things. One, our batteries are actually at a pretty similar state of charge. Not exactly. Uh, two, our wiring is good because we're getting balanced charge. We should get balanced discharge as well. Of course, we'll test that. And then I want to show you something a little tricksy on the uh, programming that you got to do with these split phase systems. All right, here we are on the other side. As you can tell, these guys are running. They're doing their job. And there's something I want to draw to your attention here. Uh, this is using the VE bus system configurator. I really recommend you do this on these because if you don't, you're gonna have problems when you connect to a 30 or 20 amp charge source. And what that is, is you have to disconnect or you have to uncheck switch as group right here. We have to do that. The reason for that is if you don't, uh, when you're on 30 amp or 20 amp, only one of these inverters is going to get power. The other one is going to run directly off of battery or DC. And that's not a problem because if you, let's say this is line one, you're only getting line one. This one would be passing through AC as well as uh, charging the battery. So the power would come out of there into the battery. And then for this one, it doesn't get any input. It's just purely inverting. So we can't switch them as group, because if we did, that one can't switch, so then that means this one won't switch. So by disabling that, that allows this one to switch when that one can't. Okay? So that's important there. And make sure we uh, send the configuration. That's important too. So again, uh, we're programming right now the AC2 out. So, quick refresher, that is, um, well, one of them here, is that it right there? No, that's AC in. AC2 out is right there, okay? And that's on both of these inverters. And what we're doing here, to use this, you have to turn the virtual switch off. We're using VE configure, and you have to start from the VE bus system configurator. So, we say do not use VS, and then we set these two programmable relays, and here's the summary on it. So what we're doing is we're telling it to first use the programmable relay, then we set it on, and I set it on when AC1 is available for 10 seconds. That means if you plug in a shore power or the generator's running, I want AC2 out to be on. That means uh, if this is powering a house or a buddy, I want that to be on or when the state of charge is higher than 30%. Now, importantly, when does the relay turn off? It turns off when the state of charge is below 20%, and that's the only condition that'll turn it off. 
Next, I want to show you inside, and uh, we've been working on there. I've had to do some custom fabricating, and I think you're going to like what we came up with. So mounting the screen is always a challenge in these, and uh, this is what we made. I made some uh, an HDPE. You know we love this stuff. It's this plastic. So I'm making it like an insert panel here, and it's pretty much right now it's press fit. Okay. You might be wondering, well, why'd you do all that? Why'd you cut all that? Well, what we did was, and we may have talked about this in a previous video, um, we're putting the screen here. So that way it's easier to read, easier to interact with. Um, and we're putting the rest of the devices in here. Like we've got a uh, controller for the Hydro Hot system. Uh, yeah, there. So that's going to go, I think, uh, in the middle there. And then we've got a uh, EMS controller here. There's a cover that's, that'll go on here. And that's going to go on the top. Before, these controls are at the bottom, and the Magnum uh, inverter controller is at the top. So we're just kind of reordering things. And you can't really get this material. So what you have to do, at least in my mind, if you can't hide it and make it look good, you got to dive into it. So that's what we're doing here. We're putting this black panel in here, and I think it'll look good. Uh, give me a couple minutes, and we'll find out together. All right, now some of you, I know some of you doubted me. Huh? Oh, that doesn't look that bad. Forgive me if we're jumping around too much, but uh, I want to try and get those batteries that are in there, those beautiful batteries, try and get those uh, talking with the servo. So to do that, we have to build a special kind of cable, and you can order these from uh, distributors like Inverters R Us. They're one of our proud partners. Uh, but we're going to be doing is making the type B cable and I put this label on here JK inverter BMS uh, So what we like to do is uh, Use this as a reference most Ethernet cables like this are type B And you can tell usually by the colors you can kind of see they match up Got the browns on one end oranges on the other so We can use that as a reference and what we'll do is we'll take let's say we, uh, we need to worry about pin 3, pin 8, pin 7. So that's 3 is green stripe, and then 7 and 8 are browns. So, and then we need to put those to pin 2, pin 5, pin 4. And if you look here, that's kind of what we got going on. Although that's upside down. So, there we go. So, pin 2, so we translated pin, uh, pin 3 to pin 2. That's the green one. So it's in the two position. And then we skip one and we get to four. And then that's uh, four and five for the striped brown and the solid brown. So that's how you make that. And uh, I haven't, I've only made a couple of these before. So let's see if this works, shall we? All right, we're in this beautiful bay here. It's uh, gotten cleaned up a little bit, probably since you last seen it. But uh, we're connected into the can port there because we uh, did the CAN side. And then we're connected into the uh, Serbo GX. And the other thing I want to talk about here is, uh, this is where you're going to need a Serbo uh, GX Mark II, because it has two independent CAN ports. So we're running uh, the CAN, uh, the VE CAN shunt. So they don't run on the same network, or they shouldn't, I don't believe. So let's... Uh, See if this is uh, available inside. Oh, we got a, <laughs> we're doing a couple of things in here. We're actually uh, replacing an air conditioner. I'm going to tease that. You're going to want to watch uh, the next part to see how that's going. And uh, to run the solar wires, I had to move the fridge out of the way here. So I'm going to have to move this back so we can get at the servo. Give me a minute. All right, we're at this, uh, the main home screen here. This is actually the first time I've set this up on the new UI. So we're going to see how this works. We've got to go down to, uh, I think it's IO. And no. We'll go to services. Let's try that. There we go. And we're going to do uh, VE CAN port 2, because that's the one we plugged into. And the profile. Let's just try uh, CAN bus BMS. Do we get anything on here? All right, well, I we must have done something right because the uh, JK BMS showed up here and looks like it's uh, 
Doing good, showing the battery temp, that's important. State of charge, state of health, I love all that stuff. Good information here. So I'm gonna play around with this and then, uh, all right, this is pretty cool. I wasn't quite sure how this was gonna work out. So um, going to details here and it's so cool we actually got this put together here. So we do have three online, so that means we have all three uh, battery modules available. And we got the installed capacity, even figured that out, that is super cool. Well, thanks for watching this long. Uh, as you can tell, we're not quite ready to wrap up this project. We got hopefully one more part to go, and I'm gonna tease it here. This roof is gonna change, and I want you to be there for it. So, to make sure you don't miss it, uh, subscribe. That'd be great, it helps us out, it helps you out, because you get to see how this turns out, so you don't miss it. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be putting, I think, think, anywhere from 2,500 to 3,000 watts of solar up here, replacing both air conditioners. You see, we're starting on one. Uh, we've already replaced all three vents back here, and we're putting Starlink on. So you wanna see how, how all that comes together with a nice rack system? We will have to see you next time. So. Uh, from all of us here at Soda Solar, myself, Sean, uh, if you want to look us up, it's like this. Just uh, punch that Soda Solar into the Google machine and you'll probably find us. Uh, Levi, of course, he's been helping out more. You're going to be seeing him on the channel a little bit more. Uh, Bear, our dog, he's around uh, probably barking at someone like usual. So uh, until next time, we'll see you later. Or we'll see you next time, next time. Ending the videos is always so hard.